If you've ever lost all the code you've written and had to start again, the chances are you're not using source control or you're not using it properly. If you want to be a software developer, then you need to understand Git and the various branching strategies that you need to use. And that's what I'm going to be covering in this video. So what is Git? Git has been around since 2005 and is the predominant source control system that developers are using. Even if you're developing a project entirely on your own, you need to be using source control so you don't lose any of the changes that you've made. It's also a lot easier to write code when you know you can always go back to a working state of the application. Now Git works on branches. Generally you have a main branch or a master branch. This is where all your code is going to sit that is deployable and working. Then you branch off copies of the master branch to allow you to make changes. Now this is great if you're working in a team as multiple developers can branch off of the master branch and make changes on their own machines. Then all your work stays on a separate branch until you're happy with it, it's working, it's been tested and reviewed and then it can get merged into the master branch. If you're working with others, then you also need to make sure that you merge any changes that have happened on the main branch back into your branch before it gets merged in. Now Git is open source and can be installed on your own machine, but if you're gonna be working with other developers, then you're gonna need something on a server. Now the most popular cloud-based service is GitHub, which I'm sure you've heard of, but there are also others such as Bitbucket and GitLab. Now GitLab's quite good because it's completely open source, which means that you can install it on your own server. If you're interested in setting up your own GitLab server on a Raspberry Pi, then let me know in the comments and I'll do a video about it soon. GitHub allows you to have both public and private repositories, so you can work on your own private projects as well as work on open source ones with the community. It's also a great resource for developers, as I'm sure you're aware, and if you've spent any time in software development, then I'm sure you've heard of GitHub already. Now, if you're working on code, especially in a team, then there's various branching strategies that you can use in Git. The main two are Git Flow and GitHub Flow. Now the latter is named after GitHub as it's the one they use internally, but you don't have to be using GitHub to be able to use this Git strategy. You just pick whichever one suits you best. Now let's have a look at both of them. Now Git Flow has several different branches to manage the release cycle, and we're gonna go through a typical development life cycle to see how each of them are used. Now the first one is the main branch. This is the branch that has all of your deployable code in it. It should be a working copy of your code and should match what's in production. The next branch you're gonna have is the develop branch. Now the develop branch is a copy of what is currently in production, but has all the changes that your developers are currently working on. Now, whenever we work on a feature, we're gonna branch off the develop branch into a feature branch. This lets you have a complete copy of what everyone is working on and allows you to make changes. Now let's say while you're working on the main branch, there's a production issue and you suddenly need to do a hot fix. Now what you do is you branch off the main branch into a hotfix branch. Now this takes a copy of what's currently in production, allows you to apply a fix, and then merge it back into production. Now what you have to do is merge that hotfix back into the develop branch so that other developers have the fix in the code that they're working on. This is especially important so you don't undo that hotfix when you come to release your code. So this would make up version 0.2 of your application. As there's been a hotfix, you then need to merge the code that's now in develop back into your feature branch you're working on, and then you can carry on working on your feature. Once your feature is ready, you create a pull request, which then gets reviewed by other developers and then merged back into develop. Now, when all of the developers are done with what they're working on in the sprint, that's when you tend to create a release branch. Once the release has been created, developers can carry on working on the develop branch by branching off and creating work for the next sprint. In the meantime, you'll generally have a QA who is testing the release on another server. Now, say they find a bug in your release. So generally you'll do a fix on the release branch, but once your fix is ready and the release is ready to go out, you'll merge that release into your main branch. This release also needs to get merged back into develop, so all the developers have the changes, especially that fix that you put on the release branch. This, of course, then gets merged into any features that you're developing, before your feature then gets merged back into develop. Now Git flow is what's used at most companies, especially those working with Scrum who will typically do a release at the end of the sprint. Git flow is especially good if you're gonna be having different releases that are gonna be going out at different times and you need to carry on doing work while another release is being tested. Now the other Git branching strategy that's used quite a lot is the GitHub flow. Named after GitHub as it's the one they use internally, GitHub flow doesn't have a release branch like you do with the Git flow. In fact, it doesn't have many branches at all, and let's have a look. Now they have the main branch or master branch, which is their working deployable code, which is in production. Now, whenever they develop a feature, they branch directly off of main into a feature branch. 
and each developer works on their own feature in their feature branch. Now this then gets reviewed and merged back into main and this then goes straight into production. Once your feature is merged back into main, it's going to be deployed almost instantly if you're using continuous delivery or at least as soon as possible. Now to be able to use GitHub Flow, it relies heavily on automated testing so that you can be sure that whatever goes into main is ready for production. GitHub Flow is used at a lot of fast paced companies that need to release quickly. So generally with GitHub Flow, because every feature goes into production, they're generally gonna be doing multiple releases per day. But I've not seen GitHub Flow be used at things like financial institutions, which are heavily regulated and need to make sure that there's no bugs in their code before they go to production. These are the two main Git strategies that you'll see at companies, but you may see other variations based off of these as well. If you use any of these Git branching strategies, please let me know in the comments. And if there's any others that you think I should cover, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Git flows. Uh, la, la, la. Git service you use, you can pitch which out, pick whichever one suits you best. Git flow. Uh, la, la, la. Bugs in that code. Nah.